Hi, so today's video is lesson 14, which is on uniform circular motion. And we're going to talk about centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is different from centrifugal acceleration. So let's go back to the example where you're driving in a car and you turn to the right. You feel like you're being pushed to the left. So that feeling of being pushed to the left due to your own inertia is the centrifugal force. But in reality, both you and the car are turning to the right. That turn is a real, um, there's a real force that's causing that turn. In the case of the car turning on the road, uh, we have um, static friction with the tires. In the case of you being pushed inwards, that's just the door, which you're now being, feel like you're being pushed up against, but that door is actually pushing on you to the right. Not only that, but the seat you're sitting on is pushing you to the right. Okay, and so those are real forces causing your direction to change, causing your velocity to change, and so this is a real acceleration. And so today we're going to analyze the, that acceleration and those forces. Tomorrow we'll talk more about the forces. Today we're going to focus more on the acceleration. Okay, so centripetal acceleration, if we're going in a circle, Okay, centripetal acceleration is always, we say it's center seeking. Okay, so the direction is always inwards towards the center. Okay, so if you're going in this direction, your velocity, and in our cases, we're only going to keep the magnitude of velocity the same. We're not going to have a changing speed. But the direction is obviously changing. Okay, but always, when, at, let's take an example at this point, our velocity is th this direction, it wants to be pulled more to the center and then that some time later our velocity is at this direction again it's trying to be pulled to the center so the force which again we'll talk more about the force later or the acceleration same direction always center seeking okay so let's analyze this motion a little bit further let's call this at some time t1 we have some velocity v1 and at some time t2, we have a velocity v2. We can also label its position relative to the center. Okay, so let's call this r1 and this r2. And we're going to analyze how our velocity has changed. To analyze how our velocity has changed, we want to know, well, the change in velocity. A okay, change in velocity is, well, v2 minus v1. So if we're going to take these vectors, say, try draw them accurately, v2 and v1, but let's take minus v1, that would be in this direction. Okay, and we'll add those. Adding them is really v2 minus v1. So we're technically we're subtracting them. So when we do that, we have v2, I'll just translate minus v1 over here, and we get our change in velocity looking like this. We can do the same thing with our position because not only has our velocity changed but our position has changed as well. So let's look at change in position. So we have r2 like this and then we're going to subtract r1 like this. This is r2, this is minus r1. And so that's our change in r. Now these two triangles are actually similar triangles. Why are they similar triangles? Well, let's look at it like this. r1 and v1 are perpendicular because your velocity is always tangent to whatever point on the circle you're at. That means that r2 and v2 are also perpendicular. So what does this mean? It means r1 changed by a certain angle theta. Now, for those two vectors to still be perpendicular, what I mean is for these two vectors to still be perpendicular, just like these two vectors are, if r1 changes by some angle theta, v1 must change by that same angle theta. Okay, so here we have theta, and here we have theta. They must be the same. And so these triangles are similar triangles. You have the same angle between these two vectors, and the length of those two vectors are the same. It's the perfect circle 
So the magnitude of R1 is the same as the magnitude of R2. And just like I said, for our cases, the speed will never change. The magnitude of V1 is the same as the magnitude of V2. So we can actually compare similar triangles. And how we're going to compare them is by comparing their ratios. So let's pick two sides. We're interested in delta V. So we're going to do delta V over. And it doesn't matter which side you pick. They're the same length anyway. So instead of V1 or V2, I'll just write V. Because we're comparing their lengths, their magnitudes. So these are all now magnitudes. And we'll do the same for R. Okay, so from this point, we can analyze this a little bit further. Okay, I'm going to actually bring um, this delta V up top here. Let me just erase this so I have some room. So delta V equals delta R times V over R. Now, the time it took to change your velocity is the exact same as the time it took to change your position, because we're just talking about one object moving in a circle. So if I divide both sides by time, what I can do here is first look at this. This is change in velocity over time. What is change in velocity over time? That's acceleration. And I'm also going to put a little subscript C since we're analyzing circular motion which is called centripetal acceleration. So I'm going to put AC equals, and what do we have over here? Here you have delta R over time. Delta R is change in position, otherwise called displacement. So what's displacement over time? Well, that's velocity. So I'm left with this, which is velocity, times this velocity over R. And that simplifies to v squared over r. So that's an equation that we're going to use. I've derived it for you so that you can see how it was derived. First of all, it was derived using magnitudes. So this equation is not a vector equation. If you want to know the direction of acceleration, just remember it's always center secret. So the direction is always radially inwards. Okay, but we can also analyze this in a couple other ways, because it is a circle. And if you continue moving in a circle, it's very, very repetitive. And in grade 11, you might remember these terms that we, what we learned for things that are repetitive. Period and frequency. So period right, is um, the time it takes to complete a certain number of cycles. So we write period as time per number of cycles. And frequency is the perfect inverse of that. It would be the number of cycles per unit time. So this has units of seconds, this has units of per seconds, which we call hertz. All right, so if we're going in a circle, to go around once, would take a certain amount of time. That would be our period to go around once. Okay. Now, if you go around once, right, that's just one cycle. And what distance do you travel? Well, to go around once, you would travel the circumference of the circle. So to calculate the distance, you need to know radius, and therefore it's 2 pi r. So we can calculate the speed it takes to go if we went around once. Right? Remember, speed is just um, distance over time. Our distance is 2 pi r. And our time is period, because we're only going around once. Right? So remember, period is the time it takes to complete one cycle. And you could also rewrite that as the velocity is 2 pi r times the frequency because the frequency is the inverse of period. So we're going to take these two equations and substitute it into this one. And you can get two other equations for acceleration, which are on uh, the top of your handout. The first one would be, so we're squaring this, so 4 pi squared. Then you have r squared divided by r, 
which is just r, over period squared. Or, if you substitute the other one, 4 pi squared r frequency squared. So these are three equations you can use to calculate centripetal acceleration. And that'll depend on what information is given to you in the question. So let's try one. Um, question one, I just did for you. Okay, but you can substitute it yourself and take a couple of steps to show that those equations are true. Question two, question two is not bad. It's, um, it's a plug and play question. It says, a ball on a string moving in a horizontal circle of radius two meters undergoes a centripetal acceleration of magnitude 15 meters per second. What's the speed of the ball? Okay, so this one's asking for speed. So let's use that first equation. So AC, centripetal acceleration is speed squared over R. And it's giving us R and acceleration. So this isn't too bad. We're just rearranging and plugging in what we know, which is 15th. So that's the square root of 30. Grabbing my calculator. Right, so 5.5. So we have 5.5 meters per second. Okay, and in this case, you do not need to write um, a direction. It says ask what's the speed of the ball, not what's the velocity. And if it did say what's the velocity, it would be kind of hard. You could say always perpendicular to the center of the circle. But I'm not going to ask you to actually state that when you calculate it. So speed is fine. And in the next lesson, we're going to specifically look more at forces and drawing free body diagrams for centripetal forces.